Thank you for double clicking your mouse tonight. You're listening to the Midnight Frightcast in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Hey everybody, welcome to the Midnight Fright Guest episode number 44. I am one of your hosts, Josh. Sitting to my left, uh, actually calling in, is the Doctor of Filmonomics, Greg, the movie guy. Hello, hello, hello. And to my right is uh, the Doctor of Everything Else, it's Patrick. Hey everybody, how's it going? And across the table, the Scream Queen herself, I can read her shirt, it's Maddie. Hi, kitties. Uh, we're back after the um, Nebraska snowpocalypse has uh, attempted to stop us. We, we set this up, what, twice already? <laughs> we, we've attempted twice to knock this uh, this cast out. And uh, the snow of Nebraska has uh, stopped us now twice. But uh, not tonight. We're back. So uh, just let's kick this shit off with uh, we watched the trailer to one of my favorite franchises in the history of franchises. Yes, he's back. The trailer for Leprechaun Returns. Who wants to go first on this one? <laughs> I'll go because I have never seen any of the Leprechaun movies. Now, you tell me there's what, like seven in the franchise? There's like Something six like or that. seven. Yeah. Six or seven. So I was able to look at this with a with a fresh look because I've always seen like the fronts of the DVDs or the VHS cases. And I've always never wanted to pick it up because it looks so incredibly bad. But you know what? I may sit down and watch this thing because it made me laugh throughout the entire trailer. It's the, the franchise is just full of the corniest bullshit ever. If you just watch the first three and then skip the dog shit that's the back half and go, I'm going to see Leprechaun Returns. I can't fucking wait for this. And I saw all these movies and the, like I said, the back half is dog shit, but I can't wait to see this movie. And if it tells you something else, this is the first Leprechaun movie that... Uh, minus Leprechaun Origins, this is the first Leprechaun movie that Warwick Davis turned down. He played Leprechaun in every single Leprechaun movie, minus the the one that's coming out. Well, he's kind of getting up there in age, isn't he? He he is, but he can still do this shit. He's uh. waiting for he's waiting for uh, Willow Two to come around. Uh. Even and, uh, even still. You look at all the remakes that are happening now and all the reboots or whatever you want to call them. All these new or all these people that started in these franchises beforehand are coming back to revitalize and put some new energy into an old franchise. What does it tell you that Warwick Davis won't even touch his own franchise? His rent must not be due. I mean, I think that's why everyone's it's, coming back. Their bills are he's, piling up. <laughs> he, he's still getting he's still getting uh, royalties from Harry Potter. That's yes. it. Harry <laughs> Potter's still in there. Like I said, he's teased Willow too, like uh, multiple times now. So that might come around. You know, everybody's looking for for Warwick Davis. So to do something, <laughs> just not this. So. But like I said, I'm excited for Leprechaun Returns. I was a huge fan of that franchise. I just keep piling them on. I'll, I'll see that shit. Yeah, I remember seeing the cover of this movie in Blockbuster. That's how long yeah. this franchise has been oh, around. Yeah. And, you know, I'm the same as Patrick. I thought this was, the movie looks hysterical. And I will totally be down to see this silly bullshit. This is the kind of stuff that I love. Now, there's no way this is going to be a theatrical release. No, it's no, it, it, digital. It's a, a digital. Yeah, it's just a digital. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So, like, you know, get the the Netflix and the Prime and, and shit like that. Yeah, but, I wasn't able to find a release date. It did say 2019. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. I guess look for it. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, and when Josh, when you first suggested this one, I was like, God, not another piece of shit trailer. <laughs> you know, but the thing was, yeah, it was a piece of shit trailer, but it made me chuckle almost I, all the way through I, it. I literally sit at home and try to find ways that I can get myself back into movie jail. And I was like, if Leprechaun <laughs> Returns doesn't do winner. it. Then, winner, winner, winner. Yeah, yeah. then I, I'm doing something wrong. So what was the one line he said in there? He says, what are you, what are you so concerned about? The audience loves gore or something like that. I it's like they, they're so obviously you're totally yeah. taking it to heart yeah. what it is. Yeah. And that's the kind of horror movies I love. I kind of call it the Freddy versus Jason effect when they just own that they're ridiculous. Those are the horror movies that I absolutely love. Not the ones that try to take themselves super seriously and make them something they're not. But the ones that were like, we had fun. Yep. Just yeah, yep. yeah. If it's making fun of itself, if you start making fun of that movie, you're just an asshole. 
Yeah. Because you're not watching it correctly. This is a movie you need like seven shots of tequila <laughs> and like a bunch of your buddies to watch. Yeah, I'm excited. Yeah. Cool. Let's kick it on over to the news because I know, according to our uh, message feed, that we got some news to talk about. And where's our news music? <laughs> We almost Come on, Grant. <laughs> it's the news. I fucking hate this so much. I know. I know. <laughs> Go, Maddie. Um, I can't remember now where I read this, but uh, James Wan, who is obviously a huge name in horror, has said that he is really interested in creating a horror version of Batman. What What do we think of that? I would totally be down for that. I have thoughts. Dude, what? No, I, yeah, go ahead. I have you some go thoughts. right ahead. Yeah. <laughs> so I love James Wan. Mm-hmm. I, he is just one of my favorite, just all around filmmakers in general. Okay. He's got Aquaman coming out. So clearly he can dive into this DC mm-hmm. comic book universe. Pun There's intended. No. Yeah, thank <laughs> you. There's no fucking way, though, he needs to make this movie a horror movie. Batman is dark. Mm-hmm. And if he just wants to make a dark movie, he doesn't need to add that horror element at all. It's already got that dark kind of horror element to it anyway. He doesn't, I don't know what he plans on doing with it or what he wants to do with it. It looks very on the, the horror side, but if I would give James Wan a Batman movie if he mm-hmm. just made a dark movie. And I'm not a DC fan. If we have to pick superhero movies, I'm definitely more of a Marvel fan. But um, fuckers. <laughs> <laughs> but I think adding that horror element would be awesome. But I do recall Batman doesn't kill people, does he? So I think that that might, is correct. Yeah, I think that kind of might be a stop in it. And I'm not saying you have to kill people to make it a horror movie, but it's kind of a big fucking part of horror movies. People are dying. But doesn't he kill people when he like doesn't he like nope. old man Wayne or whatever like? Doesn't he, like, retire as Batman and then get all super pissed off? And then he starts breaking his own rule and killing people further I, into the DC? I would I would have to do some research on that because yeah. as far as I know, he's only responsible for two deaths so far in the entire existence of Batman. Gotcha. I mean, I don't Josh, know. Go. Josh, the storyline that you're referring to is The Dark Knight Returns. Okay. And I'm pretty sure you're correct. I haven't read it myself, but just from hearing what I've heard from, you should. I think you are correct. And I also would like to disagree with you in that I feel like a horror Batman would be like the best interpretation of the Batman series. And I say that only because, yes, you are correct. Batman does not kill people. However, everybody else does. So the yeah. horror doesn't have to come from Batman. That's true. I mean, you, you go and you look at some of the animated movies that they've done, i.e. The Killing Joke. It's out there. It's dark as shit. And if you did a live action version of that, if it's not horror, I don't want to know what it is because it's going to be like, damn. Yeah. So My- I would I would love to see. Sorry, man. I'll quit here in a oh, second. You're fine. I'll, I would love to see a, a horror movie of Batman just because if James Wan does it right, you would get the Batman movie that everybody would want to see. However, I do have a problem with whichever studio owns DC right now because I'm sorry, Justice League and Suicide Squad. They're two mm-hmm. newer ones. Are some of the worst movies I've ever Christopher, seen. Christopher Nolan did Batman right. Like he did some good stuff with Batman. But yeah, as I said, I'm just kind of worried because their last couple of movies have been absolute dog shit. I don't, yeah. And this is going to be talk about un- unpopular opinions. I don't think anybody's done Batman right or Batman dark since Tim Burton did Batman. But that's just me. I know unpopular opinion. Batman. You can shit on me all you want to. It's a. Uh, it was the best Batman. But uh. I think James Wan could do Batman, right? Yeah, so. as I said, if I, and as I said, I don't know what went wrong with the last couple of DC movies, but they were bad. So, like, if he could just avoid doing whatever they did with Justice League, I would be more okay with it. DC needs to do what they did with. Uh, they need to go like uh, the way of Logan and Deadpool yeah. and make the shit rated R and a little grittier. Grow with yeah, it. Yeah. yeah, just yeah, real gritty and raw and. And make this shit and, right. You know, so. hire some decent actors. Yeah, I mean, you know, it's hit. And we miss. all know it's true. <laughs> it's hit and miss. Uh, the guy from Mad Men apparently is up for Batman, and I would love to see that. I don't know his name. John Hamm. John, John Hamm. Hamm. And I would oh, love to see him fun. as a Batman. He would. So. He would make a phenomenal Batman. Absolutely. But anyway, yeah, uh, Patrick, what do you got for news? I have as a follow up to a story that Greg brought us in episode forty three. Netflix and the Satanic Temple have announced that they 
settled their lawsuit with Netflix. Oh, and they've come to an amicable agreement with Warner Brothers and Netflix over the use of the copyright statue of Baphomet on the chilling adventures of Sabrina. And that while they have not released what the terms of the settlement are completely because of a confidentiality agreement, the statue is acknowledged in the credits of the show now. Oh, that's cool. Good job, guys. And and looking at it, they could have completely avoided this entire lawsuit had they not put the two children in that statue because there are tons and tons of statues and sketches and everything else of, of Baphomet doing the same pose that they use in this statue. However, adding the children is what made them able to sue Netflix okay. over this. Well, like, now they can uh, they can do uh, Chilling Adventures Season 2 and have no worries, because that's coming, too. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you know it is. I yeah. still haven't It's already been announced. Oh, yeah. Okay. yeah, they announced it. Yep. Yeah. So. And so, sorry, the statue's name was Bathmat? <laughs> yes, Bathmat. Batman. Bathmat. <laughs> Bathmat. All hail Bathmat. You know, I don't know how to pronounce it. It's Baphomet, B-O-P-H-O-M-E-T. Let's go with Bathmat. That's Bathmat. So Bathmat, <laughs> Bathmat, that Bathmat. works. Uh, we're going to get sued by the Satanic Temple now for calling him Bathmat. Bathmat. Uh, we're walking Yeah, if anyone wants to correct our... If anyone wants to correct our pronunciation, please let us know. You got anything else, Patrick? Uh, I do have one other thing. If you are a horror history buff, the Library of Congress has restored the first ever film version of Frankenstein. Oh, so cool. it is a 12 minute movie and it was produced in 1910. Oh, shit. And Amazing. yeah, so a long, long time ago. And uh, they digitally restored it and it is uh, viewable free at the Library of Congress website. Awesome. Cool. Well, I have the fucking lamest uh, news <laughs> of the night and it may not even be fucking horror related. So I'm just going to kick my shit out real quick so we can get this over with. If um, you were around in uh, 1998, 2002, you might remember a little show on MTV called Celebrity Deathmatch. Well, that motherfucker (laughs) is making its return in 2019. And pop stars beware, you will probably end up on that show getting your ass whooped. So 2019, Celebrity Deathmatch returns I was a fan of that show. I love that shit. I'm kicking out non-horror movie news because I was excited about Celebrity (laughs) Deathmatch. So that is my news of the night. Look for it in 2019. I don't know where it's going to appear. I don't think MTV really shows that kind of shit anymore, but it'll be like MTV2 or somewhere else. So look for some um, Celebrity Deathmatch. It'll be cool. That's my news. Yeah, I just, I can't wait. Shut the fuck up. I can't wait. (laughs) Did anyone else watch that show? I don't even. I, I don't. I don't even remember that show. Celebrity Deathmatch. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. I'll have to YouTube this. You were thing. definitely around in ninety eight to two thousand two. What do you say? Uh, well, you're old. Um, <laughs> did you watch that show, Maddie? I was seven. Oh, fuck. <laughs> Greg, you're old with me. Did you watch that show? Dude, that show was awesome. Thank you. I got somebody on my side. Celebrity Deathmatch. Now, I can't see him, so he might be like, oh, you're dumb as fuck that on the other side of this thing. But I will take the audio that that show is awesome. So No, I, I legitimately love that show. Like when, uh, when they started putting episodes, I think they started putting episodes on the internet. Maybe. I don't know if the internet was that fast about that time. Or I'm sure you they would do... They would do um, like marathons during like the weekend. I would just sit down and I would binge watch as much Celebrity Deathmatch as I could. They're fun. It's like watching Mortal Kombat, kind of like claymation Mortal Kombat. Kind of. I, I would agree with that. Right, I'm going to stop. I buried myself <laughs> enough. All right, Greg, what kind of news do you have? <laughs> All right. Well, I wanted to steal Maddie's because that was a far better topic or uh, article than what I have found. But I did find something that's fairly interesting. Director... Johannes Roberts, Johannes Roberts, however you want to pronounce it, has been coined to direct the Resident Evil reboot. Okay. Uh, he is he is the director of Forty Seven Meters Down, and more recently, The Strangers Pray at Night. I I'm not excited for the reboot because I don't think they need it. However, if they're going to go darker or pen this guy in, who's done some pretty decent horror movies mm-hmm. as a director, I can get on board with that. I I saw an article about this and I didn't really read it because I'm a little tired of Resident Evil, if we're being honest. But um, he did say he want. I did kind of just read that he wanted to make it a darker and more like horror Mm -hmm. movie instead of this like ridiculous sci fi shenanigan that they have going on right now. It it turned into an action movie. It did. It's a total action movie. You saw all the Resident Evil movies, right, Greg, and played all the games? 
that is fall. I've I played m- the majority of the games. I only saw Resident Evil One and the second one that they made. I don't remember what the uh, really? what it was called. Yeah, I feel like I've only seen one and two. Uh, we've seen all of them. We do not own all of them because okay. we found that later on it just wasn't worth purchasing. Got, got bad. Yeah. Gotcha. Weird. Well, yeah, believe that or not. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Is that is that what you got, Greg? That was it. I have no awesome. comments on the Resident Evil thing because I didn't see any of those fucking movies. You know, I I loved the first couple of them, and then it just it just went downhill. And I don't know if it was just because they were trying to make a buck, but it just just wasn't it, doing it for me. So I'm looking forward to the reboot to see how they reboot it. Yeah, yeah. they they need yeah they need to they need to give some fan service to their their people who have supported them. So yeah. they need to service their fucking fans. Wow. Sorry. All right. Uh, let's go with uh, what you've been watching. So I took a break from watching horror films because uh, my eight-year-old came up and asked me if we could watch the entire Hobbit franchise. And by God, I cannot tell my eight-year-old no. So we started and finished all three Hobbit movies, all nine fucking hours of The Hobbit. Wow. In like a week, week and a half, something like that. It, we, we had to take breaks uh, because he's eight. And yeah, he has the attention span of a turd. Like he's got no <laughs> attention span. So we do like forty minutes here and thirty minutes there. But we got through it, and he loved it. And so now we're watching the Lord of the Rings. I, I hate that entire franchise. Oh, oh, <laughs> all right, <laughs> I love it all. But I will say that three movies for the Hobbit was absolutely ridiculous. Yeah, I have a copy of the of a fan edit which uh, they took all the stuff that was not in the Hobbit and took it out of the movie. And it runs about three hours and it tells the entire story pretty damn close just, to how the book is. Just less walking? No, they took up like Legolas and the love stories and all that other oh, gotcha. expositional crap. Gotcha. So so I like the fan edit better than what Peter Jackson did with the entire nine hours. Yeah, I, I've i said this before. A three hour movie is not excusable to me. And I, I kind of hate them on that but principle alone. There's enough in those movies to fill out three hours and make it interesting, I think. Uh, and that's just not, it's not really my cup of tea, but those movies, I like Peter Jackson too, just in general. And I wonder also how different those movies would have been, how, uh, had, uh, Guillermo, Guillermo del Toro, del Toro. stayed yep. on those movies, but Peter Jackson makes some fucking beautiful stuff. I so. wonder if there would have been three movies if Guillermo I doubt del Toro it. was. He, well, may, I think so, because I think that's, he's like, I don't want to throw away fucking nine years of my life, 12 years of my life making one movie. Yeah. So uh, that's why he dropped. So. Yeah, I'm I don't blame out of, him. <laughs> out of the gate, there were three movies planned. So, Greg, what have you been watching? So I went out and uh, caught a movie that came out recently. Emily and I did. We went and saw Ralph Breaks the Internet. And I was very excited because I loved uh, Wreck-It Ralph when it first came out. So seeing the sequel, I, was, I had high hopes for it. And uh, it held up as a sequel. I thought it was just done phenomenally. So definitely check that out. Nice. Um, I've been watching a ridiculous amount of Shark Tank for no reason, but I also <laughs> watched, uh, <laughs> sorry, I also watched Hellraiser 2, and I don't know why I've never seen that because I love Hellraiser, like wow. I love Hellraiser, and it just happened to be on Netflix, and I checked it out, and I loved it even more than the first. Have you seen any of the other ones? I haven't, and I don't know why, because Hellraiser is absolutely one of my yeah. favorite franchises. Yeah, some of, the, some of the sequels are hit and miss for me, yeah. but but I thought Hellraiser 2 was fairly solid. Are you yeah. going to work your way through Yeah, them, definitely. Yeah. Um, Clive Barker is one of my favorite creators, and as I said, I love Hellraiser. The first yeah. one for me is just like one of the perfect horror movies, in gotcha. my opinion. Yeah, it's it's pretty gross. Kind and of hard to sit through it. Yeah, sometimes, and it has but... like a weird kind of. I can't even describe it. It has a creepy tone to yeah. me that I you, miss in a lot of horror movies. You yeah. also have to remember who you're talking to when you say no, gross. No, but, but what I'm saying is <laughs> it's like one of the first times I'd seen like flesh tearing and yeah. stuff yeah, like, like that. Yeah, like for that time, because it came out in the 80s. 80s yeah. Yeah, yeah, for that time, it was a very graphic movie. Yeah. yeah. So, no, I love Hellraiser and I'm really excited to start working. Yeah, the whole... Them. Hooks through the skin, suspending people, that kind of thing. They, oh, that was tough for me to the, sit the through, but still, it was are fucking fantastic. They're they so are, cool. Yeah. yeah. So. Yes. This, they actually. That's where I kind of when we did uh, Frankenstein's Army, yeah. I kind of thought of that in a the way because yeah, because yeah. some of those were done so creatively as well. Yeah. So that's what I've been watching in cool. lots of sharks. <laughs> I, I've got three things on my list. 
I went through the entire season of the chilling adventures of Sabrina. And I don't know that I liked it as much as I liked Riverdale, but I still liked it quite a bit. And it, it, I, I think part of it for me was getting over the actress, Kiernan, can't think of her last name now, uh, because she was in Mad Men. She played Draper's daughter in it. So it was kind of hard for me to see her doing this right now. And I think she, there's part of me that wants to say she needs to toughen up a bit because she's still a little too, I don't know. Like bubbly? No, not quite that. Almost too cheerleader like. I was going to say oh. blonde. But <laughs> no, 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 no. It's like too much. Almost, but I, I really like what they're doing with it. So I'm looking forward to season two of that. Cool. Uh, I saw a movie, Josh, that I think you saw for the 31 Days of Horror Challenge, Unfriended the Dark Web. I did not watch Dark Web. I oh. watched the first Unfriended. I have not okay. seen Dark Web yet. I do want to check it out, uh, but I, I fucking hated Unfriended. Okay. So <laughs> Now, the first one was more paranormal, right? They didn't really say what was causing them to do all this stuff, right? Yeah, there was somebody on the other end of the conversation that kept saying it. You need to do this for in 10 right. seconds. This person is going, but you never saw anybody. Right. But there were certain things that happened that seemed almost paranormal. Yeah, like, paranormal like the guy with, the, and yeah, I'm yeah. going to give a spoiler on this because it's an older movie. Like when he put his hand in the blender, yeah, yeah. no one was forcing his hand yeah. to do it or anything like yeah. that. So I, to me, it felt like there was some force in that. Mm -hmm. And in the dark web, it's people on the dark web, a person that's on the dark web that is okay. controlling them. So it was a little bit more believable. Okay. In that sense, somebody could control it. Now, is it, is it better? It's hard for me to look at these things working in the tech sector that I see how these things work and how they portray them. And I know that, oh, they couldn't do that on the Internet at that point or do this, that or the other thing. Mm -hmm. So some of that's spoiled for me. So I have to suspend my belief. And and I was actually able to really enjoy it. So gotcha. I would suggest seeing it and, and just know that it's more of a thriller than a horror movie. Cool. And then finally... My wife and I stepped out last night on a date and went and saw The Possession of Hannah Grace. I cannot fucking wait to see that movie. And my response was, it seems to be like a cross between the autopsy of Jane Doe and The Grudge. I loved both those movies. So I will be interested <laughs> to see what you think of it. Yeah, I can't wait to see that. Yeah, I had wanted used, to see yeah. that one. It. It was really weird. I, this was a movie that I had seen advertisements for way earlier mm -hmm. this year. And then all of a sudden I didn't see anything for it. And it, then all of a sudden it just like started popping up it, again. It popped up again because uh, it played during Halloween. Mm -hmm. Okay. It played during Halloween. Um, it was a, one of the first times I saw it. Okay. Yeah. No, I, as I said, I saw it way at the beginning of this year, gotcha. like stuff for it. And then I <laughs> it just kind of vanished for a while. And I was like, I couldn't remember the name of it, but yeah, I was excited to see this one, too. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, like I said, that's that's how I felt. It was a combination of the two movies. They tried to throw in some original stuff, but there was also, like I said, a lot of throwback to the other two. It almost had a last shift feeling to it for a little while as well. So I don't know if it was a movie based on its own original ideas or it just borrowed from a ton of other stuff. Well, did it bring anything to the table as far as new stuff for Possession movies? Because even though I've said before I love Possession movies... But they kind of are like this. It's like kind of like they're, this zombie genre for with, me where there's not a lot more you can bring to the yeah, table. One note. Without, yeah. yeah, without giving away anything, I will say, yes, it did bring something. OK, new, but it wasn't significant enough for you to sit back and go, oh, my God. OK, yeah. I, I can deal with that. OK, <laughs> She's laying on the table saying I'm not dead yet. <laughs> um, that'd be something new. Uh, let's, uh, are you, is that good? Patrick? And that's it. That's, that's okay. what I've been watching. That, that, I've been trying to catch up on a sitcom that I have never seen an episode of before. And that was Cheers. Oh, and yeah. so I've been binging that for a little while. Cheers. So that's cool. it. Cool. Uh, we got a topic and I would just say this right now in the final hour, Patrick fucking saved uh, our topic because I threw out the dog shittiest of dog shitty topics the other week. And I'm so glad we're not doing what I threw out. Are you, are you going to let people know what it was? Uh, absolutely fucking not. Um, <laughs> what I will say is Patrick has saved the day and kind of threw out a new topic. And it really, it'll it'll kind of blend well anyway with um, our cast coming up here because we're going to do a 2018 top 10 cast um, here soon. So what we're going to do tonight is uh, do uh, 2018 movies that were letdowns. 
Um, uh, Maddie is not doing 2018, right? Oh, I'm doing things that I've seen in 20, that I watched in 2018. And I think most of these were made in 2018. Okay, I cool. didn't bother. Yeah. Now, yeah. see, this would have been more timely had we been able to podcast, you know, two weeks ago yeah. when we wanted to, because it was the week after, it was the weekend after Thanksgiving. So it, so it was originally slated as the 2018 horror turkeys. Yes. Um, we just had to. Change it from turkey to let down. To let down fine. because, <laughs> <laughs> because we let down our audience by not podcasting for the past two weeks. Yeah. Um, so these are the 2018 horror movie letdowns according to us. us. <laughs> so uh, who do we have a round robin this? Or let's just let's like, round robin this okay. and go kind yeah. of one um, at a time. I, did, we haven't I, have, done that I, I put out four. How many? Four. You got? Yeah. You got I've five? got I've got three listed. You got three. What do you got, Greg? I have two and one honorable mention. Okay, okay, cool. Well, I got four. Maddie's got so four. So we'll go you and Maddie first, and then we'll go around the table. Cool. Uh, go ahead, Maddie. Okay. Um, all of my movies on my list are let downs for actually the same reason, and it's because of two things. They lacked the intensity that I look for in a horror movie, and I feel like they were marketed as horror movies, and they weren't. And that's a huge pet peeve of mine, as I've said before. Don't tease me. I, you market a movie as a horror movie. I want to see a horror movie, gotcha. not a thriller, not a drama, not whatever. So I'm not saying these are bad movies. They were just a letdown. And my number one is A Quiet Place. Cool. Are we saying uh, you got like why? why? It, as I said, it, it was marketed as a horror movie. Cool. And it was not a horror movie. I guarantee you come our 2018 best of list, we're going to have fisticuffs because a quiet place is going to land on every single person's list. Well, as I said, I'm, yours. I'm not saying it's a bad movie. I'm just saying that it irritated me yeah. that they tried to but pass it off. It wasn't. Yeah. Horror. No, it was absolutely not a yeah. horror movie. And as I said, I still count Emily Blunt's character as the stupidest woman in horror. Oh my god! Wow. <laughs> okay. Um, all right. Well, um, I, I I wrote down four as well. Um, my list comes from movies that I was really looking forward to in 2018. Like I I could not fucking wait to see these movies, and they just I walked out of the theater wanting to fucking kill somebody. I was so mad. So top one on my list was Annihilation. Um, did anybody see Annihilation? No, it's got I Natalie did not. Portman in it. It's got a great cast in it, but again, it was not a horror film. Yeah, it was very sci-fi, and uh, I was just super excited to watch that movie. And it was one of those movies where everybody either really loved it or everybody was just like, "What the fuck was that?" Was that the um, movie that was? Uh, it appeared to be really similar to. Oh, I can't think of her name now. It was another movie that was released in 2018 about the vi- zombie virus that it's they not, tried to heal. Zero? No, so it's not. It's, it's, there's a, a section of like Earth or whatever that's like got a big giant like fucking bubble thing over it. And they go into this. So it was like this, the like, dome? Uh, they go into this like void thing where like all the plants and animals in there have like mutated. Mutated and shit. And, uh, these like I think it's like four scientists or something like that go in there to kind of figure out. I don't know. All I know is it ends with the most annoying fucking noise in the world, wow. <laughs> and then it just ends. And I was like, mm, "Well, I fucking hated that." <laughs> so, uh, Annihilation is number one on my shit list. So now we can round robin. All Greg, right, Greg. what do you got, buddy? So the first one that I have on my list, let me pull it up here really quick. Do, 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 Oh, we're yeah. back to the news? It's not the news. Um, okay, so the first one that I had on my list was one that I went and saw recently, actually. And it's a – you can't really call it a reboot. I don't really want to call it a sequel, but I think it's just another episode in the series was The Predator. And it's because yeah. The Predator series has not been a horror movie or sold as a horror movie for a very long time. And what they did with this Predator was just weak. I was not impressed with it at all. And it was just, it was one of those, you walk out of the theater and you're like, that's two and a half hours, I'm not getting back. So thanks for that. So the Predator. Go ahead, Manny. Okay. Um, My next one is uh, the movie I am currently in the penalty box for, and that's a dark song. I was excited for it when I saw the trailer. They marketed it as a horror movie. No, no. It was almost like hot garbage level. <laughs> we shat all over that one. Yeah, that, we did. We, yeah. yeah, 
But you guys, I said, you guys were nicer on the cast than you were in the chat because I got back from my trip and just saw like fuck this fuck this fuck that movie fuck you like uh, 17 messages we had a little time to think about it yeah. afterwards everyone I mean, calm down one. yeah <laughs> what do you got Patrick the one at the top of my list is uh my wife and daughter went to see this and when I looked at these lists it was more about movies that I had hope for that they would be good movies. It's not like I was like, Oh, I can't wait to see this one because it's going to be so phenomenal and then be let down. No, my list is more along the lines of, you know, this has the potential to be a really good movie. And the one at the top of my list, right after the Super Bowl, Netflix released it, the Cloverfield <laughs> yep. paradox. Yep. Oh, and you know, it was a surprise film coming out. It's one of the trio films mm-hmm. of Cloverfield. Yep all this other stuff. And I, I was bored from beginning to end. Smartest marketing. Yeah. I was going to say, I was Patrick, thinking that. Really well. hold on, hold on. Yeah. Patrick, you were not bored until the end because when that thing popped out of the clouds, you immediately f- were interested again. No. <laughs> really? You weren't? No. Oh no. Okay. No, it did not yeah. excite me for any future Cloverfield projects. Because that's that's how it was for me. Like I was bored to tears through that entire thing until I saw that stupid monster pop out of the clouds. It's like, well, god damn it! Now I'm hooked and I want to see where this thing goes. <laughs> but doesn't that so that was a wasn't that a prequel to Cloverfield? Because yes. isn't that where Cloverfield? Uh, was, that's where Cloverfield picks up, right? It, it's hard to say because what it does it splits timelines. Oh yeah, I forgot. Stupid. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Everyone was drunk after Super Bowl. Don't be throwing all that yeah. stuff all yeah. over the place. Yeah, my second one is a franchise that is batting, eh, it's got four movies in the franchise, two of them I really enjoyed. Um, This one was pretty bad, and it's The First Purge. I did not enjoy The First Purge at all. I was a a fan of that franchise, eh, kind of. Um, This was just an entry that they did not need to do. Um, It didn't really bring, I, I always love a good kind of prequel into like a mm-hmm. uh, nice little backstory where all this shit kind of started and came from. But this was just one that they, there's no reason for it. So, you know, the, the, the purge kind of kicked off. It's now it's got a TV show and they're just milking the shit out of it. And uh, they need oh. to let a, a pretty decent franchise just die. How was Marissa Tomei in it? Was paycheck. it paycheck? Paycheck. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Paycheck. So first purge bummed me out. Number two on my shit list. Go, Greg. So next on my list of biggest disappointments for 2018 was a movie that I had uh, I had picked up some interest with, and that was Winchester. And I was very interested to see what they were going to do with it, first of all, because it is one of the most notoriously haunted places in America. And second, I was interested to see how they were going to make a single story out of what the Winchester house was. And I felt like it fell just flat on its face. That was a lot of F's in there. Fell flat on its face. I, I don't know how they could have done it any better. I know how they could have done it worse because they were basically on the cusp of that. So Winchester was just kind of a big, fat fucking dud. <laughs> big, fat fucking dud. Okay. That's okay. A lot of F's. Yeah. <clears throat> Go, <Right>. ready. <laughs> My third one is Hush. Which... <gasps> Oh, oh wow. my gosh. Oh, I, restrain yourself. Oh my restrain God. yourself. I know. I was disappointed. You in know, this. the 2018 best of is going to be really <laughs> interesting. Be <laughs> I just, this movie, while I thought it was cool and it was a good idea, it really reminded me kind of of Don't Be Afraid of the Dark with Audrey Hepburn. But it just lacked an intensity that I was wanting in this movie. I just kind of felt... I don't know, there's a weird, almost jokey tone to this movie that I don't know why I picked up on it, but it just, as I said, it just didn't go to where I wanted it to go. So that was disappointing. And you're right, it it wound up on a lot of best of lists, but I don't know. I just was really hyped up for it, and then it just didn't deliver what I was expecting, so that's kind of why it's a... See, but that's why we brought Maddie on to this yeah. group. Yeah, yeah, Because, yep. I, because I, I, she, I'm an yeah. asshole. No, because, <laughs> no, 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 no. because you like stuff that we don't. Yeah, yeah. You bring such a different perspective yeah. to it. So. I feel like Maddie was like, God, what are these guys like? 
All right, I'm going to shit on that one, and then we'll shit <laughs> on that That's exactly one. what I yeah. was doing. That's her 2018 list, the she shit went, on those guys' She list. went back and listened to past podcasts yeah, right. and said, okay, they like that one. <laughs> Fuck that Fuck one. That. Fuck it. Yeah. <laughs> no, that's not what I was doing. I just, as I said, there was something about Hutch that just didn't take it to where I wanted it to go. All right. Go, Patrick. Oh, I'm not going to talk much about this one, but Blumhouse's Truth or Dare. Oh, gotcha. Yeah. I thought that, I mean, that had potential for a lot of really good stuff and it just, it just fell short for me. Yeah. It's not that it was horrible or anything like that. It just, it just wasn't, it, it didn't do it for me. Blumhouse is going to come out with a game franchise and is eventually you're going to be able to buy their game box and uh, you're going to get truth or dare in there. Shoots and ladders. Yeah. And, uh, you know, uh, hide and seek, yeah. whatever else they make. So uh, is that what you got? Is that all you had left? Patrick? I, I've got one more. Okay, I, cool. I think we all have one. Yeah, more. Right, cool. one more. So. Um, yeah. My number three. Um, and I will pass over it really quickly um, because I can't wait to get to number four. The the worst I feel movie in the franchise uh, in the Conjuring universe was The Nun. The Nun um, had all the makings of a fantastic fucking movie, and it was the old Turd Ferguson. So um, the old Turd Ferguson. Number four on my shit list is The Nun. It was that number three. Number three on my shit list. God, yeah, was number three. Up. Number three was The Nun. Yeah. So Greg, your number three. My number three is going to be my honorable mention, and I call it an honorable mention because it's not really a horror movie, but it was still an entertaining movie for what it was, and that was The Meg. Oh, yeah. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Crickets. Hey, <there> <laughs> did go. anybody else see that movie? I and did. That's all no. I got to say about Patrick? that. But, did no, I did it? not no. see it. I do want to see it. Um but I have not. I, uh, I know Rachel went and saw it and she was not impressed. Yeah, I have not chased that dream yet. So, <laughs> uh, What do you got, Maddie? My number four, and this is the one that I was so disappointed in because I was so excited, was Jeepers Creepers 3. Oh, I wow. love the Jeepers Creepers franchise and part three was was not good. Yeah, It was a CGI hellhole and uh, it just didn't, it didn't add anything to the franchise. Yeah. I really wanted an origin story or something, and it kept kind of teasing towards an origin story, yeah. and it never, it just never came about. So Jeepers Creepers 3 was my, I poured one out for my dead homie there. I, I did <laughs> not make it through the first Jeepers Creepers movie, so I bailed. Really? Yeah, I didn't like it. Hmm. Uh, so. It's one of my favorite franchises. and I found yeah. it enjoyable. It's yeah. fun. Yeah. They're fun. Uh, what do you got, Patrick? Um, I just wanted to say the nun was my honorable mention because yeah. it, it, while it was still enjoyable, it, it just, it didn't hold pretty, up. It didn't hold up to the rest of the franchise. Yeah, it was a lot of fun to look at. Yes. Yeah. But my number one letdown of 2018, because I love the lore behind it, but it looks like they just didn't care enough to write a script that was worth a shit or <laughs> hire a company for CGI worth a shit was Slender Man. Oh, gotcha. oh. yeah, yeah. I never it, saw that one. It was horrible. My <laughs> wife, my daughter, and I sat painfully for an hour and 20 minutes through Ugh. that thing. It that's was, too long. It was bad. Yeah. It was bad. Yeah. And that's all I got to say about that. All right. Well, my number four was a movie that I went way the fuck off on. And uh, I sat in a theater by myself and screamed back I at know this what motherfucker. It is. <laughs> my number four is 2018's Halloween. Uh, we've already had this conversation. Um, uh, I've already dished my problems on this motherfucking movie, <laughs> so I don't need to spend a whole lot more time on it. Um, uh, but Halloween is number four on my shit list. The end. <laughs> Greg, you got another one, or is that it? Negative. Was that nope, it? I'm I think that's it. I ended it on that turd. Okay, cool. <laughs> um, then we have a feature film to talk about. And uh, do you have deets on this on this uh, on this, uh, Patrick? I do have the deets on it. So, yeah, real quick. So right. um, I did pick um, a movie this week. I hope it did not land me in movie jail. I actually kind of enjoyed it, but we watched a movie called "May the Devil Take You," and Patrick's got the deets. All right, "May the Devil Take You," 2018, now streaming on Netflix. When her estranged father falls into a mysterious coma, a young woman seeks answers at his old villa where she and her stepsister uncovered dark truths. IMDb rating 6.4. 
Metascore rating not available. Rotten Tomatoes critic score, 86%. Rotten Tomatoes audience score, 56%. So who wants to dive into this? Who wants to start? I will say that to me, I felt this movie was an Indonesian, and I will say it's Indonesian because it was subtitled, Indonesian Evil Dead. I did write Evil Dead. Yeah. It just had that feeling to it, even though Mm -hmm. it didn't quite follow all the way through with that Evil Dead feeling. That's just kind of what I walked away from this movie with. Yeah. Not Sam Raimi's Evil Dead, though. It was like, um, oh, fuck, now I can't think of his name. Remake Evil Dead. Yeah. It's more more like that tone than uh, the, the OG Evil Dead. But keep going, Patrick. No, I, I, it just to me, it just had that feeling to it. And I don't really know why. It's just kind of like that creepy demon under the floorboards feeling mm-hmm. all the way through. And, you know, then part of it takes you out into the woods where they're chased down by things and she's grabbed by roots and all this other crap. So it just really felt like the filmmaker was heavily influenced by Raimi's work. Go ahead, buddy. I liked this movie. Uh, there were a couple things that I just kind of nitpicked on just because that's who I am as a person. Uh, the makeup a couple times was not very good. And that's something I really will zero in on. But there, I have to say there were 20 minutes of this movie that I absolutely loved. I was kind of lukewarm on the rest of it. It just, it was interesting, but it wasn't, it wasn't popping. But then there was like 20 minutes, like around the time where I can't remember anybody's name in this movie because I watched it like two and a half weeks ago. Right, right. Ben, was that the male character? Ruben. 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 Okay, yeah. She called him Ben, though. Yeah. Yeah. It w- that part around where he died, I loved what was going on there. I don't know why when they were all like trapped in the house and that whatever the younger, the older girl's name is, was Maya. just, thank you, <laughs> was just like going nuts. I thought that was such a cool scene and then i love that little like winged demon goat thingy that kind of kept popping up in the background that whole thing from like the time when they got trapped in the house until it kind of got to the point where i'm like okay you just need to end this movie and i was disappointed in how it ended it just kind of fell flat for me mm-hmm. it just it was anticlimactic i guess yeah at the I, end they stretched it out a little bit too yeah i was kind of um, like what are you doing yeah. <laughs> like just end it um I don't know. Uh, what I, I've said this before too. Like Asian horror, like they know how to fucking make a horror film. That shit. Uh, generally, like I don't just I don't really like get scared anymore from horror films. But then I see that kind of stuff, and that it, it's got a, a a little bit of a just a little bit of a mental a mm-hmm. mind fuck feel to it. Uh, at least it makes you think and then look over your shoulder once or you know once or twice. And to me, that's the making of a good horror film. I don't care how many blood and guts are in your film. Um, if you can make me kind of look over my shoulder just mm-hmm. to see what the fuck is behind me for a second, then uh, you've made a, a good film. I did write down Evil Dead. Uh, mm-hmm. That was one of my notes. When I first watched this movie, so I don't, <laughs> I was an idiot. I don't really like subtitled movies because I don't really like to have to read the movie because I'm lazy and I just don't <laughs> like to read. But once in a while, I'll get a movie where I have to read it and I don't really feel like I'm having to, it doesn't feel like I'm having to read it. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? Like I can follow it and read it. Like usually I have to watch a movie and read it and then rewatch it because I'm missing visuals. And I didn't feel like I had to do that with this movie um, at all. I could follow fairly close. Yeah. The storyline wasn't ultra complicated. <clears throat> so you didn't have to like feel like you were like, what's going on? Well, and at the same time though, I was kind of like, what the fuck is this movie about? <laughs> what is, what are we doing? Like, I get it. Like, I know what the movie is about, uh, is about, but maybe it was just so simple that I was like, what is this movie about? And um, I don't know. I think they did a good job of setting up the pre-story yeah. to the whole thing with uh, Lesmana's dealings with the witch woman down mm-hmm. in the basement and then showing all those clips, those newspaper clippings. So you were able to find out the timeline of him marrying a woman, having his daughter, Alfie, who's the main character in this, that her mom supposedly committed suicide. Then he remarried this actress woman with the stepkids and all this other stuff. So I thought they did a really good job of setting that up in the beginning and then following through with the family being involved at the end or the middle and the end as well, Mm -hmm. that it wasn't just all about Alfie, that it was also about the stepkids as well. Greg. So I 
I have a confession to make. I did watch this movie. I did watch the movie. However, I finished the last hour that I needed to finish 20 minutes before we started this podcast. So, <laughs> um, I can't say much to the story because a lot of it was watching it through the fast forwarded scene clips on the bottom of my Netflix. But what I will state is that I did enjoy the film for the Asian horror that they put into it. Like you said, Josh, Asians know how to make horror really fucking creepy, and I love it. There were some great scenes in here. One of my favorites was the scene where the mother gets pulled down into the basement Mm -hmm. and then makes a return. Absolutely love that entire sequence. And I think, uh, Maddie, you had said the scene where Ruben – becomes the uh, the victim of the voodoo doll was another one of my favorite sequences, just watching how that whole that whole thing unfolded. And just the the setup of the terror of the scenes, really without even having story background to it, was phenomenal for me. So mm-hmm. I, I really did enjoy that aspect of the film. And now I kind of it makes me want to go back and actually see what the uh, what the story entailed building up to those points. Fetty Alvarez, by the way. Fetty Alvarez is evil dead. God damn it, that was bugging me. Sorry. <laughs> I think there was a lot of shots in this movie that looked really cool. Yeah. Like, I'm not a technical guy like a couple of you guys are, but there's some... <laughs> yes. <laughs> but there was just some scenes in there that I was like, I want this on a poster. Mm-hmm. Like, this looks awesome. Yeah. You know, and as technology advances, it's getting harder and harder to tell what's CGI and what's practical effects anymore. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But I... I feel from watching this movie that the majority of it was practical effects, that yeah. there were very few times they relied on CGI. I think with the tongue coming out and yeah. stuff like that, obviously. But other than that, I think they handled everything practically. Yeah. And that's my favorite type of effects. Yeah. Um, being an effects person is I love practical effects that are enhanced with CGI. Like that's how I think they should be like, cause I mm-hmm. love the silent Hill franchise and it's, mm-hmm. I like the first silent Hill, sorry. And I, <laughs> they do all practical effects enhanced with CGI. And I think that's what this movie did. And it's really a good match. And then you don't have that weird CGI, cheap CGI yeah. look. Yeah. It's definitely one of the better movies that Netflix has, um, has added to its, its queue. Yeah. Um, for sure, they added a, a hand uh, a few movies at the same time. They added this one that I definitely want to go back and, and check out. But I don't know. I thought the Devil May Take You was a was a good a good pick. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. Yeah, I think I think you've probably box. gotten out of the penalty box with that one. Uh, yes. <laughs> um, there was like I said, you know, talking about the practical effects. There was one effect in particular that I don't know if it was digital. I don't know if it was practical. But the way they handled it was really well, and that was Ruben's death. Mm-hmm. Do you, yeah, do you remember me. what it is? I fucking, I fucking watched it. I, I can't really ago. say because it's a it's a spoiler. Yeah, this is a new movie. Shit. Yeah. But uh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. Okay, I yeah, just visualized cool. it for yep. Josh, and yep. now he understands what it is. <laughs> yep. So I was uh, gonna be all over uh, Facebook Live here in a second, but no big deal. Yeah. Well. <laughs> yeah. Everybody watches this in playback anyway. It doesn't they do. They do. So um, there were some other things in there that that I just want to do some shout outs for fingernails breaking off of people's fingers just drives me insane. I can't watch that. It it just wigs me out every single time. Have you seen an imprint? No, I don't want to now because <laughs> cause now it has something to do with fingernails getting ripped off of people. I can't watch that. That's just, oh, that just hurts so bad. And for some reason, I wrote down anyone from Mayan barbecue. I don't know why I put that on there. Weird. Hmm. I, one thing that I have noticed in a lot of asian horror movies is why is there always like a bunch of hair everywhere because that i think is disgusting i can watch anything except for like wet hair just grosses yeah. me out you know, and, and i'm not even i'm gonna spoil this anyway because it's not really it's not giving away any part of the movie yeah you know, like when she rolls up the hair in the paper and eats yep. it swallows yep. it nope and then later on he's like tugging it out of his mouth yeah. and all that it's like it's like oh that is but you saw that in like was it the grudge or the yeah in the grudge? Uh, yeah. And yeah, yeah. I think and it was in the ring. It might have been in the ring too. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And I'm like, why is this a thing? <laughs> and, it, and it must be something with Asian, Asian horror. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. That as I said, I can watch people getting hacked, chopped, burned, fingernails breaking off the second you put some damp hair in there, and I'm like, <laughs> oh no, checking out. Wow. Yeah. In fact, I wrote down hair sushi. Oh, uh, oh god. So there you go. <laughs> mm, yummy. And then a lot of mouth blood in this movie as well yeah the uh the dad um 
fuck it. The dad death in the hospital. Oh, yeah, was, yeah, yeah. Was, yeah, it was all yeah, the well, there's that. Yeah. And there's, I mean, I wrote it down like three or four times that there's a lot of mouth blood in yeah. this movie. So that was kind of mm. cool that, you know, doing things like that, once again, jumping back to the practical effects and everything. Yeah. Well, I thought it was kind of cool. All the deaths kind of were, th- I don't know if themed is the right thing, but everyone, I feel like, almost kind of died in a similar way. But in cool ways. Yeah. But I don't know. There were some cool deaths in this movie. Oh, yeah. I agree with that. I think my final note was uh, they're never going to be able to sell that villa. No. 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 They wanted to, but they're... They're just going to have to burn that shit yeah, I down. Think so. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, Greg, any more, any more stuff? Any more thoughts? No. I think I've uh, tapped out. Awesome. Let's uh, let's score this thing. Let's score it. Yeah. All right. Uh, we normally, I, I, it's been a while since we've yeah, done this. So we've got the gore factor, the yeah. scare factor, and the overall yep. factor. So the gore factor for me, kind of low, even yeah. though there was some yeah. some blood in it and stuff yeah. like that. And so for me, the gore factor is probably a four. I'm right there with you. Yeah. Yeah. yeah three, four. Fair. Greg? Five. I give it a five. All right. Okay. Uh, so then there's the scare factor. Overall, I would probably keep it fairly low as well, even though there was some really cool scenes in it but i'd probably say between a five and a six for me i'm gonna be right there with you as well yeah four or five yeah i didn't think it was scary agreed agreed so all right I had, I, I had a couple of those moments where i was you know i got a little bit like i'm gonna look over my shoulder for a second yeah i'll come back to it but uh See, I, but yeah that's that, fair. that ranking is so hard to do anymore because i think we've become so desensitized yeah right to things yeah. you know like if i was rating this movie back when i was seven Well, I mean, seven, please. (laughs) Thirteen, when I was a teenager, that type of thing, I probably would have ranked it a lot higher. Overall score, I'd probably give it a six or a seven. Yeah, I was was going to go seven, eight. Yeah, I was going to say, I was thinking six or seven about what the audience score was. It was was good. I would definitely tell people to to check this movie out. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'd I'd say when I did the deets on this thing and saw what they scored on IMDb and Rotten Tomatoes, I think it fell pretty much right in with what I was thinking. Yeah, absolutely. Greg. Greg. Seven. Wow. Cool. As, uh, uh, note this Frightcast today that we all fucking agreed on a score for <laughs> one single movie and it'll never happen again. That, that was your comeback movie, too. I know, right? Yeah. Well, you know, I think I'll retire now <laughs> and never pick another movie again. <laughs> what does it end on that note? Um, let's do some plugs. All right. Let's plug away. Matt, do you got a plug? As always, I am giving a shout out to Screenbox. Christmas is coming up. I know everyone has horror fans on their list. Get them a year of this. They have a bunch of uh, Christmas themed horror movies as well, which are always a ton of fun. So get on over to a Screenbox TV. Check them out for thirty five dollars. You can get an entire year of entertainment for that sicko that you know and love. Cool. Greg, I know you got a plug. So I am Greg the Movie Guy, and I'm the best movie reviewer you have never heard of. However, not as of recent, Greg the Movie Guy has gone dark. It's kind of scary. I actually haven't posted in almost a month. Oh, lazy. Right? (laughs) I blame my job, who has taken all of my time. However, that does not mean that I am done for the year. No, no, no. I have two or three movies in the hopper that I am ready to write, and they will be up, posted, we'll say before the end of the year. I hope. That is gregthemovieguy.com. Um, yeah, I mean, I don't really have a plug. I do and I don't. I, I'm going to – I'll always talk about the the, the the Prairie Lights Film Festival, even though it's a fucking year away. You can now submit. You can submit. The submissions are open. Uh, you can go to uh, the um, – Film Freeway. The Film Freeway and uh, and submit your film, if you are a Nebraska filmmaker, to the, uh, the Prairie Lights Film Festival. Um, it's one of my just favorite times of the year. I love going up there and, and hanging out with people and kicking around some some cool stuff and watching some some, some cool Nebraska made films. So uh, uh, right now, like I said, they're in early uh, submission, and uh, if you have a film, you should fucking check that uh, check that film freeway out and submit. Maddie's fucking laughing at me like I did something wrong. <laughs> I know it's a year away. I got it, but I got nothing else to plug. So give me no. A break. Just your enthusiasm is just overwhelming. Uh, well, it's, 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 it's normally it's like hey. You know, Prairie Lights Film Festival. It's like, yeah, you know, fuck it. It's a year away. <laughs> Look, all right, I'm going to quit. Patrick, I know you got a uh, your plug. I do. You know, hey, if you like this podcast, and we know you do, then help us out. Go to iTunes or whatever format you're listening to this podcast on and rate and review us. Uh, it would help us out greatly. Uh, you can find us also on Twitter at mfrightcast. 
Instagram, Midnight Frightcast. Uh, we do have Facebook groups and pages for the Frightcast, but also check out MidnightFrightFilms.com. Uh, not only do we do podcasts, but we love doing films, and we've got some films there. Check them out. So we're all over the place. Just check out Midnight Fright Films, Midnight Fright Cast. Give us some feedback. We'd love to hear what you're thinking. We'd love to see, maybe give us some suggestions of films that you want us to review, etc. Just uh, give us a shout. Cool. Are we going to come back next time with our, are we going to do our best of show 2018? We will do one. I don't know if it's going to be the next one or the following one. All right. Well, if we do it the next time, drop some, uh, drop some of your favorite 2018 movies on the, uh, the Frightcast page. Let us know your top 10. And if we don't, re- we don't fucking read it next time. We'll read it the next time after that. We'll eventually get to it. Give us your fucking list until the next time. We'll see you, uh, in two weeks, three weeks, four weeks on the Midnight Frightcast. Peace out. Boy Scout.